In the 11th century, the Balkan Peninsula would host a deadly feud between two of the most powerful nations in Europe. The long-standing Eastern Roman Empire, better known as Byzantine Empire, and the steadily rising Kingdom of Hungary. Which between them was a small coalition of South Slavic groups known as the Principality of Serbia. For centuries, the Serbian lands lived in irrelevance and danger, with warring ruling classes failing to find a way to catapult it into glory. But after centuries of struggle, the Nemanjic dynasty would be established, and with it, Serbia would blossom. Let us begin in the late 11th century. The great-grandson of the famous warlord Stefan Vojislav, Prince Vukan, claimed the throne of Rushka, the crown land of the Serbs. Vukan erected a new dynasty in his name, and so the Vukanovic dynasty ruled over the regions of Rushka and Bosnia. In 1090, he violently seized the seaside towns to the west from his kinsman, Doboslav II, and, much to the liking of Hungary, would also begin to expand into Byzantine territory. The Hungarian ruling family, the Apards, would intermarry with the Vukanovic family to form a mighty alliance against their common enemy. Vukan's descendants therefore played powerful political roles in the coming years, governing Croatia, Dalmatia, and, in the case of Helena Vukanovic, even Hungary itself. Amid this, Serbia was caught in the crossfire of the vicious Hungarian-Byzantine War. As allies, the Serbs and Hungarians would fight the Greeks until 1129, when a peace treaty was signed. The Serbs accepted suzerainty to Byzantium. Any ambition for complete independence had been killed. Despite being sworn to Byzantine loyalty, the Vukanovic dynasty remained loyal to Hungary for decades, which would annoy the Emperor of Byzantium, the notorious Manuel I Komnimnos. Manuel travelled to Nish to crush the rebellious Serbs, ending the once great Vukanovic dynasty. The Emperor began a search for a new ruling family, one that would remain loyal to Constantinople. So he looked towards the Western Serb lands, known for their adherence to the Orthodox faith. In the town of Ribnica, Manuel decided upon a noble with four strong sons. The eldest, Tichomir, would be given supreme control over the other three, Stratzimir, Miroslav, and the youngest, Nemanja. It was this brother Nemanja who began to gain quite the reputation. Nemanja became adored by the people. He was said to be cunning and charismatic and a deadly fighter. He developed strong political connections around the rest of Europe and began to order the construction of many churches in his region without his brother's consent. To many, he seemed a worthy ruler of the Serbs, sprouting seeds of jealousy in the eldest, Kikomir. With the help of Stratzimir and Miroslav, Kikomir imprisoned Nemanja in the dungeons of Ras. Nemanja was betrayed and defeated but this injustice would not last, as an outcry from the people forced Tikhomir's hand. Nemanja would be freed. However, legend tells that it was God himself that freed Nemanja by striking the iron bars with light. Nemanja would not let the injustice done to him by his brothers remain unanswered. Nemanja rallied together thousands from all over the Serb lands and marched back to Ras with a united Serbian army. In a swell of adrenaline, he made a great toast and announced his desire for Serbia to become independent. Once again, the Byzantines were forced to quell a Serbian revolution. 
Emperor Manuel sent the defeated brothers back with a great army with which they met their brother in the flatlands at Pantina in 1167. Behind the Menia stood thousands of loyal soldiers from all corners of the Serb lands, but on the other side of the field waited a much greater Byzantine force under the command of Tikomir. The stage was set to determine the future of Serbia and her people. Tichomir was slain, and Nemanja's other two brothers were spared after they begged him for forgiveness. Nemanja's story captured the hearts of the common man, and it seemed as if he had been chosen by God himself to rule and protect the Serbian nation. He would be crowned ruler of all Serbs, and inherited the titular name Stefan. Serbia had achieved something it had never before, unity. In the midst of this chaos, the Byzantine-Hungarian conflict raged on, with Nemenia playing his part to thwart the Byzantine invasions. The bloodshed had lasted for decades. Eventually, Bela III, who had Manuel's support, ascended to the throne of Hungary and called an end to the war. Manuel could then focus his attention on Serbia, which he swiftly overran with Bela's support. Manuel faced a problem, Nemenja's larger-than-life status amongst the Serbian people. He would be difficult to replace. Instead of dethroning him, Manuel allowed Nemenja to stay in power, at a cost. Nemenja was sent to Constantinople in dirty rags, where the ruthless emperor's colleagues would throw food and laugh at him. Nemenja was humiliated and forced to swear obedience. On his trip home, he came to a decision. This would not be his legacy. Systematically, he stripped control from lower nobles, ensuring he had complete control of the Serbian lands. He married his brother to the sister of Kulin, an emerging Bosnian noble. The military strength at his disposal was now greater than ever before. In 1180, Manuel passed. His iron grip had now come loose. Hungary rushed to take the Byzantine port cities in Dalmatia. They would also march south to take Bosnia from Kulin. Nemanja also began to take slices of the cake, most notably Skadar and the vital trading hub of Ragusa known to the Slavs as Dubrovnik. Even the Bulgarians rose again in force, and the distant Normans sailed in to reap the rewards. The Byzantine Empire's hand was forced. It signed a peace treaty in 1190. One of Nemanja's sons was to marry the Greek princess Eudokia.
Nemanja and his wife Anastasia had six children, three of which were sons. By tradition, the eldest son, Vukan, would be the one to inherit Serbia. However, Nemanja's middle son, Stefan, had stronger diplomatic connections and seemed the more level-headed of the two, so he was to marry Eudokia and become ruler of the Serbs. The frustrated Vukan would be given Zeta, and their gentle younger brother, Rastko, chose to become a monk, travelling to Mount Athos with their father. Rasko and Nemenya would go on to lead holy and quaint lives under the monastic names Sava and Simeon. Nemenya's family and most of the Slavs they ruled over adhered to the Orthodox faith, but this adherence was relatively new and fickle, at least in the eyes of Pope Innocent III, who sent the resentful Vukan a controversial proposal. Vukan was asked to overthrow Stefan and convert the Serbians to Catholicism. If he did this, Rome would crown him the first king of Serbia. To the dismay of Nemanja, Vukan agreed, prepared his forces and was granted aid by King Emmerich of Hungary. He overwhelmed Stefan, driving him east to Bulgaria. Serbia had been pushed towards the Catholic sphere of influence. The Catholic world seemed strong and united, especially Hungary, which rose economically via trade in the Dalmatian coast. These Dalmatian port cities were highly sought after by the Republic of Venice, who would go to great lengths to acquire them. Of all these cities, there were none more majestic and mighty than the city of Zara. At this time in history, the Fourth Crusade had been arranged. A striking force from all over Western Europe committed to the goal of retaking Jerusalem. For this task, Venice constructed a large fleet unlike any other. However, the Crusaders lacked the funds to complete the payment, so Venice made them a dubious counteroffer. The Crusaders were to sack these Dalmatian cities such that Venice could seize them. Many commanders objected, as they considered it heretical for Christian knights to sack a passive Christian city. But soon, most accepted what had to be done. The city was devastated. Venice's foothold in the Adriatic was firmly planted, and soon they also took Ragusa. These same crusaders would continue to sack Constantinople, leading to an even steeper decline in Byzantine power after Manuel's death. In the sea of confusion, Stefan marched to battle Vukan to take back Serbia. But their brother Rasko returned, urging the brothers to put down their arms and make peace. Vukan recognised his treachery and accepted his brother's rule. The three brothers made their father proud and ushered an era of peace for the people. Serbia was catapulted into a bright and powerful future. Nemanja and Rasko rebuilt Helanda, a fortified monastery overlooking the Aegean Sea where Rasko, better known as Sava, would become the first archbishop of the new independent Serbian church. Sava's beautiful text would even canonise him as a saint. Stefan would live up to his father's legacy, becoming a powerful and beloved leader, defeating all noblemen who refused to bend the knee. Serbia was at its strongest, and Stefan demanded a more worthy title. In 1217, a papal legate crowned Stefan the King of Serbia. After centuries of struggle, Serbia was finally a kingdom. The Kingdom of Serbia would adopt a white double-headed eagle against a vibrant red field as a symbol. The Nemanjic dynasty and Serbian culture were born.